This is Thursday, December 1st, 2016. We are at the Edith North Rogers Memorial Veterans Hospital in Bedford, Massachusetts. And this tape is part of the ongoing Veterans Oral History Project based at the Morse Institute Library in partnership with Natick Pegasus in Natick, Massachusetts. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and we are privileged to have with us today John Filios. Welcome, John. May I ask when you were born? When was I born? Yes. 13th of October, 1916. And where were you born? Westfield. And where do you currently live? Where what? Where do you currently live? Where do I currently live? Yes. Uh, well, you see, my wife died, and uh, I uh, no longer own a house and, and kids in it. So uh, uh, the best thing I can say, uh, this is my home, more or less. Okay. Uh, and do you have children? Pardon? Do you have children? Children. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, no. Uh, five. I think we've had five grandchildren. Now, John, I understand that you recently celebrated your 100th birthday. Yes. for which we offer our congratulations. And your parents came from Italy. What part of Italy did they come from? The northern part of Italy, my parents. Okay. Like your father was a farmer? Pardon? Was your farmer a father a farmer? Yes. And yes. when did they move to the United States? 1916. And you were born shortly after? Shortly thereafter. Uh, he may have come in 1914 or 19. See, he came twice. He, he came as a single person to uh, help work uh, in the, the Springfield along the river there uh, in uh, uh, 1908 and uh, uh, worked for a while and then went back and uh, I don't know when he got married, before or after, but uh, uh, he did come. Um, and you want to know how many children we had? Uh, he had, he and my mother had 10. Mm. So I have, uh, uh, I had three older m men boys, rather, uh, whatever, uh, older than me, and one daughter. Um, the three boys that were born uh, are now all dead. Mm -hmm. uh, the f oldest one was a uh, uh, fireman for Springfield, Mass., and the um, the uh, second one uh, was a, a machinist. He had his own uh, factory, more or less, of making very accurate uh, uh, equip e uh, pieces of, of metal, uh, for instance, that the airplane people wanted or the military. Uh, my, it was my second oldest brother. Um, he had a very profitable uh, business, and he turned it over to his son. The third uh, uh, oldest brother uh, uh, studied uh, in Massachusetts, uh, studied, uh, what's that uh, company that uh, teaches people uh, a lot about uh, uh, for uh, uh, keeping track of your money. Anyhow, 
He uh, got a job for uh, one of the earlier is uh, he uh, uh, infect, inspected bo uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what was it he would inspect uh, mostly uh, banks that the government w was using or had some access to. Uh, he was the third. And um, uh, the first one, uh, his wife is still alive. He died. The second one, same story, uh, but his wife died. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, uh, well, anyhow, the third one, um, I think his wife is still alive. So I have three older brothers. And uh, my wife and I had, uh, uh, well, still have two. My wife died a few years ago. My, um, uh, 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 let's see, family, we had two sons. Um, uh, uh, both became pilots in the Air Force. Okay, John, let's get back to you. And what do you remember about growing up in Westfield? Or Growing up? Well, we lived four miles or so uh, out of the city of Westfield and had a small farm. Nothing, nothing as good as what he had in Italy, but he had a farm. And he worked uh, back up in the... <coughs> smaller mountains where uh, the city of Springfield had a uh, a, 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 a dam and had a big uh, source of water and uh, the water was not was uh, piped into um, uh, an area and um, underground more or less uh, um, and um, then then piped um, uh, uh, to another uh, place uh, West Springfield and then to Springfield. Do you remember uh, anything about the Great Depression? About what? The Great Depression. Depression, yes. Mm -hmm. um, my father was uh, well, real uh, happy that they finally got over the depression. Mm -hmm. But he did not um, lose his job. People have to drink more. Being in the western part of Massachusetts yes. at that time, do you, do you remember when the Quabbin Reservoir was built? When it was what? When it was built. Quabbin. Yes. Um, Quabbin Water was the second place to Springfield. The first place was in uh, the western part of uh, more of, of the Westfield area. Do you remember the Hurricane of 38? Do I remember the what? The Hurricane of 38? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, not, hurricane. This was the hurricane that went up Rhode Island and damaged a good deal of Massachusetts, including yeah. your neck of the woods. Yeah. Westfield got hit. I was going to college, Amherst, and we got it up there, too. So that means you at least, you graduated from high school. Pardon? You graduated from high school. Yes. And you're in Amherst College. I went to the state college there. Oh. So Not you went to Amherst. Oh, it okay. was in Amherst, but mm -hmm. it isn't Amherst College where the 
rich people go. <laughs> All right. So you went to what was then Mass State College? Yes. What was your major? Major? Well, chemistry. What did you want to be? Well, I thought I'd be a chemist. Did but you? Uh, I really didn't. I, I, I uh, uh, did a little bit of it, but not much. When did you graduate from Mass State College? Uh, State College in the 40s. Um, 42, I think. 1942, thereabouts. Now, John, were you working at the time? Were you also, did you have a part time job? Uh, yeah, I had. Um, Uh, a job before I got to college. Um, well, I worked, of course, my father had a small farm in uh, Western, uh, four miles north of, of Westfield. And, uh, um, uh, uh, we were no, uh, living not too far from a family in Olexac. Uh, there are two or three families mm -hmm. with that name. And um, the, they lived uh, uh, more or less a, a mile away. We were in one road, and there's a road off to the left towards the west, and there's about three different families named Oleg Sack, mm -hmm. and they had a, a still uh, have a uh, company that uh, um, that uh, 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 makes lumber, sells it to people that want to build houses. And they're, they're, um, I worked for them. Um, um, See, for, oh, I had other jobs before working for them, but they had a road that went right through uh, over the edge of our, our property. They went from this, the road there on, this is the, the road to go north to the west to uh, Warren Oco, uh, Huntington, and so on, and uh, they were, uh, the Rolex Sex were have a had a lumber company way up that area too, and um, uh, cut had a uh, a uh, uh, <coughs> what is the uh, business of cutting trees and making lumber up uh, Huntington up that area. And um, uh, th to get there, they were driving their car right next to my father's property into the road that went north. And they saw me uh, uh, working, cutting down a, a tree that uh, was sort of uh, on our border and uh, offered me a job. Um, and so I worked for the lumber company Oh, quite a few years, um, and quit it for a while to go to school, college, uh, uh, and uh, 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 during the summer I, I uh, still worked for the, uh, the we they had a believe it or not a uh, steam uh, driven power for their sawmill. And uh, I was hired to fire this the uh, um, furnace that and also helped uh, well, keep the fire going all the time. Okay. But um, uh, also 
drove a truck to a loaded um, wood out to where they stacked it. They put it up uh, right after you cut it. You put it in a pile so that it uh, 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 dries up and uh, you fit it so that it'll run. It, it won't get all wet, you know. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and uh, uh, after it's dried well, then you make boxes or mm -hmm. you ship it somewhere uh, for people that want lumber. Okay. So, John, being of Italian heritage, what did your family think of Benito Mussolini? Of uh, Mussolini? They yes. hated him. Okay. One of the reasons they moved uh, uh, and uh, 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 the years that he did, um, well, he get away from from uh, Italy when Mussolini was there, and uh, we were we were pleased that the Mussolini got killed by the uh, Italians. Okay. All right, we're leading up to your start of your military service now. What do you remember about the attack on Pearl Harbor in December 7, 1941? Getting out of college, or about through it, I got a, a job working for the government. Um, what was I doing? Well, Uh, a place that was making uh, uh, the uh, a good part of uh, it was the time when we were the, the, state, the U.S. was helping uh, 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 the the uh, um, the uh, um, English people that were fighting. Uh, yeah, anyhow, um, th th there was a contract for uh, U.S. to provide uh, some uh, gu gun uh, or cannon uh, uh, bullets, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, not bullet, but um, I don't have the right term for uh, the 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 thing that comes sh shooting out of the of a. Uh, uh, we'll call it ammunition. Yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, I I worked for them for a few years, and um, um, what was he going to say? Yeah. That uh, 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 during that time period, uh, I was pretty strong, and I remember moving something. Uh, uh, the boss was big, and, and we were we were doing this for the government. Uh, uh, the, uh, we were working on the. Um, uh, uh, back end of a of a um, um, uh, shell that comes out of a cannon, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, um, it was made uh, there in the near um, the southern part of Massachusetts, down there uh, near the. Uh, 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 along with the uh, water, well, anyhow, the uh, Fall River, mm -hmm. it was way down near the, the uh, ocean. Well, anyhow, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the head, uh, well, I was uh, one of the, uh, about three, three of us, 
uh, that were um, uh, people. I be went because I knew a little chemistry and uh, also uh, quite a bit about uh, um, uh, how to, uh, to put together this, this uh, shell that goes into a can. And, um, uh, well, what we were doing for a while, we were putting in the part on the shell that would say, uh, uh, would, uh, it would be carried and it would go off, not, not, uh, not compulsed, pushed out. That was a little different, but once it was out, uh, then when it hit something, it exploded, mm -hmm. and um, um, we had to put together the head of it that was, in fact, the product that we made was sent up to Canada, and they practiced shooting some into uh, one of the Great Lakes out into the pond just, just to test it and see if it so uh, we send them a bunch of them. They test one or two to see if they work. Mm -hmm. Typical. Okay, so John, you're in Fall River, correct? Fall River. And you're helping create and build munitions. And some of them would be sent to Canada well, to be and tested. Then it would wind up in England. Mm -hmm. And England was, uh, while I was doing that, England started fighting Germany. Mm -hmm. So were you, uh, you were working for the government, yeah. but you were not in the military yet, or had That's you? true, I was not in the oh. military. All right, how long were you in Fall River? Well, I worked for them for several years. Well, I was working for the, uh, the uh, uh, the company, uh, uh, Alex Brothers, uh, they, um, well, they were pretty good. Well, put it this way, uh, working in the woods, uh, met some people that uh, uh, um, went to work for a company that was building expansion of uh, Kevin's, Devon's, especially the, the hospital there. And um, the, the people that, uh, that I knew in the, uh, uh, that were uh, helping the, the, uh, uh, the sawmill um, and, and the wor worker of out in the woods cutting the trees to provide the sawmill. Right. Um, some of them lived uh, out uh, near Boston uh, and uh, 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 for why I don't know, I uh, got to be pretty lucky with them. And uh, they said, why don't you come out here if you want and live in, uh, Pittsburgh or whatever, and uh, w we're uh, working at Fort Devon for the government. And um, uh, so uh, I don't know why I uh, left the public uh, after the, uh, the uh, sawmill, but I went to work uh, uh, at Fort Devon uh, where uh, what was it, working a whole variety of things, mm -hmm. uh, helping uh, where they were building houses, okay. even if it was just putting in a... Uh, <laughs> All right. When you were working at Fort Devens, was this before or after the United States entered the war? After their what? After they, dec they were in the war. They were in the war. Okay. Um, when did you join the Air Force? Well, uh, this is before I went down and, and worked for the 
a company that was making uh, uh, Box, okay. the, somehow after I got, was working there, they needed somebody to teach. Uh, one of those companies that I worked for uh, was going to was asked to teach uh, young um, people that were going to be uh, on uh, uh, in uh, uh, airplanes uh, and operate the uh, uh, the uh, uh, radio or the um, uh, what's it the well, the stuff that sends signals. Oh, radar? Uh, radar, but uh, uh, not so much that as uh, um, uh, the um, code. I had to teach the kids uh, the um, Morse code mm -hmm. of sending signals. Uh, and uh, turned out rather strict. I found out that the woman can learn the, uh, the uh, would you believe it? The woman uh, can learn how to uh, use the Morse co code and were being hired by railroad. Why? Because railroad um, not only built a, uh, say, a, uh, 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 a, uh, uh, what, what, what we call it? Well, anyhow, uh, uh, their their uh, track would uh, go out and uh, go off to out west to Albany and on and so on. But all alongside of the uh, 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 railroad. They would have a, 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 a strict uh, bunch of wires going on uh, uh, up on poles and going next. You find them, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, railroad going, and near it a lot of wires you know, on poles that were sending. The, uh, uh, they would send it from Boston to somewhere uh, halfway to Albany or something. Uh, you got to wait for so-and-so that's coming in to join you. or something. In other words, they, they had uh, uh, a lot of the wires, almost one for every city from Boston to uh, so on, I, you could see poles with five or six strips of wire. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. Well, anyhow, uh, uh, they uh, uh, needed uh, men that uh, uh, can handle the Morse code. Mm -hmm. So I was I hired out uh, for a while. I hired out building the buildings with the, uh, with the carpenters and so on, and me lugging the wood uh, slubber, or uh, in fact, I was a foreman. Okay, now John. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, anyhow, I wound up turning, get, taking the job, teaching the kids how to handle the code. The Morse code that's used on those uh, rail, uh, on those wires. Okay, here. Time. All right. When did you enter the United States Air Force? I was uh, working on the, for that company that made the bill, the ammunition, and uh, uh, then when I. Uh, signed up. Uh, I went over to uh, the uh, place where they were signing up people. It was right after. Uh, what what convinced me was uh, the thing that the Japanese did to um, when they attacked. Uh, 
what was it they attacked? Uh, islands, our islands. And uh, that's when I signed up with the Air, the Air Force. So that was uh, when they attacked Wake Island and Guam? Yeah. Okay. And I signed up with a with a uh, conflict, and they they uh, uh, send me somewhere out west, California. Was this the first time you were out of Massachusetts? I was what? Was this the first time you were away from Massachusetts? Yes. How, how did you like California? How did I like it? Yeah. Oh, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And what do you remember about... Well, uh, my wife came out there. Mm -hmm. I got married... Uh, uh, you know, uh, later, later, a little later. Okay, let's get you back to California again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's good. Now, John, the government won't send me back to there. Okay. So, there were um, two groups of inspectors in this plant in La Fall River that were building these uh uh, 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 sh shells, um, and uh, they offered me um, uh, the uh, uh, civilian company that uh, were hired by the company that uh, bought the plants and, you know, Paid us, uh, uh, so on. Uh, they um, they thought I was a nut to join after the the um, uh, Japanese hit the uh, islands. That uh, I decided then to to go into the Air Force. And uh, the boss down there in Fall River that uh, uh, said I thought I was kind of nutty and I had a pretty good job. Why do I want to be a just a you know a, a, a lieutenant or a, a, a beginner a sergeant, or whatever? In other words, he thought I wouldn't wouldn't do that well in the military, but I did. You did? Yeah. Okay, let's get you back in uniform. You finished your training. Do you remember where you were sent? Were you sent to a base in the United States, or were you sent overseas? No, at first it was United States. Uh, Do you remember where in hmm. the United States? California. Okay, you're back in California. Do you remember what your duties were? Got into the... Uh, the uh, Air Force as a, a radio man, uh, radio. All right, you're a radio man. Were you a radio man on a base or on a plane? Airplane. Okay. Do you remember what kind of plane? Was it a B-17, a 24? 
17 was was the one that, that I was in first. And, uh, I'm sorry. Um, what um, got me into something was uh, when they bought these big bombers that were um, um, had a lot bigger um, uh, military on it. Um, they uh, had heavier uh, uh, things for uh, shooting and dropping uh, bombs, uh, but firing out if, if it's a bomber, then it would be firing the smaller airplanes that were coming and tr tracking him. That's what the British and the, not the British, the, the uh, may, um, Pol Polish or the one, uh, what was it, G German and uh, and Russian uh, uh, s uh, build, build, uh, had um, smaller airplanes just like we did for defense. And, but then uh, w when uh, uh, the Americans got this great big, big bomber, that's when we started doing uh, uh, air, uh, 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 radios, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, it would carry the bombs that, that uh, exploded, uh, uh, what we call, oh, imagine, the stuff that kills everybody, blows up, you know, what we call that. An atomic bomb? Atomic. Okay. Yeah. When we got a bomber that was meant to carry atomic, I uh, got involved in, in uh, uh, testing it and coming up with uh, this is a, this is late, not the very soon, not the early part of my con my time with being a con uh, someone uh, in the Air Force uh, in the early days of it. Well, I, uh, my wife came out, woman came out and married me out in California. So a little later in the war, you got to te help test the atomic bomb. You got to see the bomb go boom. Yeah, anyhow. The, the big thing I did was to uh, 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 set up a uh, testing w with the help of uh, the defense, where uh, uh, the defense uh, was one that had uh, 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 stations, oh, you know, uh, with radios in them and so on. Well, whatever. Um, um, I got, uh, uh, I did a lot, and this is probably wh where the thinks that I uh, did some things that would, would uh, be great. Uh, in the future. Well, anyhow, I I got some help from people uh, that had uh, small uh, 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 airplanes that were single, one man, but were used for, uh, or two men or so on, or three, or I don't know, but small uh, and uh, w were used for fighting, uh, defending, uh, you know. You have uh, the airplane 
the, the Air Force had a nice big fat one that carried heavy bonds, and to protect it, they had uh, more guns than than the little plane, but the the little plane would be attacking the big one, particularly little planes from from Germany and Russia, and um, uh, they would uh, come at the front or the side or the tail, and so the guns in the big plane had one looking straight ahead, had one looking off to the side, had another one in the in the tail, and had quite a lot of of uh, uh, of uh, men to operate them. You know, you can't have one in all those places. You, you had one here and a different one, and so on. And so uh, the uh, thing that makes me probably uh, know of, know of uh, such a t time that delivered something that they find was very good. Um, uh, I uh, uh, ran some tests with the help of the small uh, bombers, the small fighters uh, um, out in the West mostly, but um, uh, uh, the um, um, uh, the uh, best way to to defend yourself against the small fighters. If we would come so and so uh, nose on the front or the side, and the biggest thing I wanted was that if you if you uh, the man is coming from the side, you really could switch the tail fire bomber but the uh, man that you get a tail he'll swing around here as well as the one that's on the side and you could hit two uh, uh, guns from two guns aiming at that man with only one and um, if you did that with just about every area if he's hitting you at, at the nose on there's not much you can do except the nose above your pilot, aim like that. But if he comes just a little bit over off to the side, you got the one from the top and another one from halfway up of the airplane could uh, uh, shoot him. In other words, uh, the, uh, uh, w the testing was, does this work or not? And uh, yeah, apparently, <coughs> yeah, it did, and was thought about by some of the most important uh, generals. Quite a long time after I first went over to California. <laughs> mm -hmm. In other words, uh, it was quite a quite a while. So you spent most of uh, the war in California while serving with the Air Force. Pardon? Is that correct? Uh, so while you were in the Air Force during the Second World War, yeah. you were mostly in California. Yeah. Were you sent anywhere else? Well, <clears throat> I went out to, um, yeah. Well, anyhow, uh, uh, the uh, idea was we ran the tests all the way from uh, Upper California down to, to the Lower California and uh, uh, ran some of the tests to show this is the better way, the, better, the best way you have for developing, depending or uh, making, do, you winning the shooting because you would have two groups on one coming in 
Uh, of course, uh, their, their answer is, uh, well, we could, they could come in from both this side and this side, you know, but uh, 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 whenever you could uh, work it to where you had uh, two guns on their one, uh, you were ahead. <laughs> and uh, this uh, testing that uh, I uh, uh, was able to uh, uh, arrange to start with um, uh, was because of coordination with the American defense with the light, small fighters. So we ran some tests on this thing, and it seems like it worked. Uh, the generals like it, and uh, uh, that's the place where my name might stay, Phil, because uh, you know I I set it up. I, I got an okay from the small fighters of our own to work this out and. Uh, we set it up uh, pretty well to test, see how it would would work, what I had proposed. Now, John, while you were stationed in California, did you hear about any advances of the enemy aircraft, such as the early jets? Pardon? Did you hear about the Germans developing jets? Oh... I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring it that far. Is it took a? It, uh, I don't know how long it takes for them to build uh, airplanes of that of that size. Uh, I didn't know it. Okay. Okay. Now, how long were you stationed out in California? Were you there until the end of the war? Well. Were you in California until the end of the war? Pretty much, yes. Okay. And you think when did I get uh, retired? Okay, you retired. Yeah. Interesting that I was visiting California and then I went up to Alaska, Alaska for a while. Oh, you were? Uh, yeah. What was up in Alaska besides icebergs? Well, there was uh, uh, some work uh, that the Russians were floating, uh, putting people on big ice flows up there, floating ar around or in different places. And um, uh, we, um, well, one of our soldiers uh, knew a little, know a little Russian, uh, was up there in a bomber airplane of ours and uh, uh, heard the Russians uh, uh, sending information back to uh, from from Canada up or from uh, not Canada but uh, uh, Alaska uh, sending this stuff back to uh, Russia from the uh, uh, ice code, uh, ice, uh, they had like uh, guns and things uh, floating on some of the big ice, uh, ice money uh, places. And uh, uh, I, I know that uh, um, the, the, uh, one of the uh, uh, American codes, young men, enlisted men, just uh, listening on the TV, uh, the radio, uh, heard them sending this Russian stuff. 
and he recorded it, and he got a uh, special, uh, well, he, he got a, what, some sort of a, uh, an award. Like accommodation? Yeah. Okay. And, and his, uh, we were real pleased with that, but he wasn't allowed to say, say much about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what the trouble was, some of the other things that I did, they didn't really want me to tell me much about it. Um, if I helped to build a, uh, a, a uh, uh, a bunch of, uh, what, up, up on top of a mountain, yeah, and uh, build a, a radio set there and one that would could be able to listen to stuff from quite a long ways away. And was this radio station up in Alaska or in California? No, this was uh, more in California. Okay. So this was taking place during the early years of the Cold War with Russia? It was, uh, the, the one up on top of the mountain was mm -hmm. actually after this, uh, War and the um, what's the one where we had um, we had Korea, we had Vietnam. Forgot the one where we had this uh, September. Mm -hmm. I'd have to think about it. All but, right. Um, So do you remember how long you were in the Air Force overall? Was it five years, ten years? Oh, a lot more than that. A lot more than that. Was it more like 20 years? Yeah. Okay. In addition to being in California and Alaska, do you remember uh, where else you were stationed? Such as? Were you stationed elsewhere in the United States? Oh, I was uh, a small amount of stuff in Europe. Okay. Europe. England. And and um, yeah, mm -hmm. we um, what was it? The one, the one. Oh yeah, the British uh, defenses uh, at radar and scattered around all around there. Uh, and um, I had a bit of a problem of, of running uh, all the way up to the and down uh, that would test their uh, defensive radar uh, on both the, the uh, North Sea and the ocean. Well, and um, um, we provided uh, uh, some jammers uh, on on these routes to see uh, how um, well well really the jammers were the what the British put on their uh, their big. Uh, they were going to use them. Uh, uh, we, were, we were going around putting a jammer into the, ruining their their ability to see. You know, uh, if you uh, uh, the radar normally would wave over and get a bounce, and you instead fed a lot of stratic that, that they couldn't see you know, the airplane and so on. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and um, uh, we ran a test in England. Uh, so what can you do if uh, the Russians or someone try doing that? Uh, and you you can't see them anymore. Well, all you know is that, uh, you know. And um, uh, I know that uh, uh, I got a lot of credit for having set something like that up at the, with the British to uh, test this. And we had uh, enough we, uh, in on uh, aboard our, uh, um, uh, our, our bombing airplanes that were stationed there. We added a little, uh, a few more pieces of, of, inform of jammers and uh, played around in England to say, this is what the, the other team, uh, Russians and so on will, will try to do, make you, uh, you know, not able to do as like you because uh, you, you get a lot of fuzz and look cloud on, you can't see. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's probably where they think my name is important, but I don't brag about it. Mm -hmm. John, let's take a half step back. You're an officer in the Air Force, and you are kind of in the middle of the Cold War. Can you explain what well, was... Well, the one back here in, in America, yeah, it was me. I t went to see the defense people uh, that uh, were in charge of all the defensive radars in Alaska and down into California and over, uh, you know, in different places. And uh, uh, we ran around across them and uh, uh, was there okay. Did a lot of jamming mm -hmm. to see what we could damage their ability to watch uh, airplanes. There's just a lot of fuzz on, on their stuff. Um, and um, uh, part of this uh, was really testing the ability of our, of our people. Uh, to uh, jam this or that or the other, and which one does the worst work, you know, uh, on the enemy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, generals on seeing this saw, hey, they, this is pretty good. And uh, so that really uh, uh, gave me a, a name that got around and amongst them. Well, uh, in general, what did you think about your service in the Air Force? Well, the Air Force won't uh, do that as a, the, uh, the, if the public doesn't want it, the Air Force won't do it. If the uh, people in the city doesn't want uh, a bunch of even older men walking down the street with guns, okay. they don't want it. Never mind the guns. Let's talk about you. Uh, in general, how important was it for you to serve in the Air Force for 20 years? Was it a good experience for you, a bad experience? Well, I have no no knowledge. I just have to guess that. Okay. Well, John Filios, we thank you so much for taking part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project.